Last night on Checkpoint, we spoke to a Christchurch homeowner whose insurance claim is still unresolved six years and 11 months after the February 2011 earthquake. Suddenly, we started hearing from listener after listener in a similar situation, remarkable feedback. So we called the EQC minister, Dr. Megan Woods, and she told us on air there are over 3,000 unresolved claims with EQC. Well, today we sought the number of unresolved claims still with private insurers. That's over 2,700. In total, that's almost 6,000 unresolved claims that we know about seven years on. We've been talking to just some of those people and we will bring you their stories over the next few nights, but we were struck by how many of them thought their EQC or insurance claims had been resolved until they went to sell their house or do some renovation work or some other issue arose. At that stage, a builder came in and it's then they learned they have earthquake damage they didn't even know about or still have damage they thought had been repaired. Christchurch lawyer Grant Shand is representing some of these people, two main groups of people, one that purchased properties with EQC documents saying work had been completed, another trying to sell or renovate, calling in the builders and then getting the bad news. Both of those people are now coming to light now with building reports or they're actually investigating the supposed work and finding out it wasn't done sometimes at all or done to a proper standard and they're now looking at EQC to uh, make it all right now. And if we are going to identify an area in the home, in properties, which is most likely to have escaped the kind of attention it should have had, where would that be? It's beneath the floor. It's the foundations, be that a floor slab beneath the carpet or uh, piles and a perimeter beneath the floors. So a lot of the cosmetic work was done, right? So there were, clack, uh, there were cracks, there were chimneys had fallen down, that stuff was obvious and was repaired. The stuff that seems to be coming to light now and seems to have been most likely to escape attention post-2011 is the foundations and the land, the remediation that was required to make it solid again? Well, I'd say it's more the foundations. I think land is a totally separate story. The true state of the land and how EQC is going to fix that is yet to be known. My view is that what we're really talking about now with these problem EQC work is foundations uh, that either weren't done at all or were done badly. And foundations in Christchurch can be very, very expensive. What are we talking about here to get the foundation oh. work done? Basic job. I mean, some people spend hundreds of thousands. It all depends on what's necessary. But once you get into lifting up a house, building a new foundation, you're north of 100 grand. Grant, do you think we, the people of Christchurch, EQC or the private insurers, have any sense yet of how great this problem of second and third time around EQC claims are going to be? I'd say EQC does, but uh, what you're actually told by it is the true picture. Who knows? But at the moment, you've got about 600-odd unresolved high court claims, and you've got thousands and thousands of these people with the bad EQC repairs. So who knows how all this is going to get resolved? And how is it going to get resolved? I mean, you've taken class actions on behalf of some of these people and you are still working with some of these people. How can it be resolved? Uh, I don't know. I don't know because these aren't straightforward cases. They are technical cases um, that involve hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I don't know how it's going to be resolved. John, sorry. It's Grant Shand, and we would love to hear from you if you're in Christchurch and you are in that position.